This is Jack Jackson back again, and this time we're going to be looking at box and whiskers plots. So we're continuing our, our discussion of descriptive statistics and more specifically measures of relative standing. In our last video, we talked about the five number summary known as the quartiles. Minimum, Q1, median, Q3, and maximum. And a box and whiskers plot gives us a visual way of visualizing that five number uh, set of quartiles. So this is called a box plot or sometimes a box and whiskers plot. So again, it's a graphical representation of the quartiles. So here's how you make one. You start by drawing a horizontal number line and it has to be a number line and that number line needs to start at at least the minimum or lower and it needs to end at the maximum or higher and it must have a consistent scale going across that and that will be in the same units as whatever it is you're measuring. Now what you do is above each quartile you draw a little bitty vertical line of the same size. You connect the endpoints of the upper and lower quartiles, the Q1 and Q3, to form a little box, a rectangle. That's the box of the box plot. And that contains the middle half of the data from Q1 to Q3 is half of the data. Now connect the midpoints of the segments above the minimum and lower quartile to form the lower whisker and similarly form the upper whisker. The whole thing could be rotated and done with vertical box plots instead. And this is especially valuable when you're comparing more than one data set and you can look at two box plots just side by side. Now, right now we're talking about what I'm going to call just a box plot or a basic box plot. After discussing outliers in a later section, we'll address what I call modified box plots, which take outliers into consideration. But for this video, we're not going to worry about outliers. So if you remember from a previous video and a previous data we've been looking at, here are the inauguration ages of the United States presidents from Washington to Obama. And this is the date, uh, their age at their first inauguration, if they were inaugurated more than one. And we already computed the minimum, 42. Q1 is 50. The median is 54. Q3 right here is 58. And the maximum is 69. Now, if you don't remember how we did that, go back a few slides or to the last video and go back over that. Now, how, here's how you actually make the box plot. So I, this time I did it below the number line instead of above it because I have the box plot, uh, the dot plot going above it. But every one of these, where I've got the minimum, I draw a vertical line. Where I have the max, the Q1 vertical line, the same size in, in line here. Then a vertical line at the median, Q3 at the maximum. Then I finish up the vertical horizontal lines here and here to, to draw a box that goes from Q3, Q1 to Q3. And this is the box of the box plot. The whiskers then I draw from the midpoint here out to the midpoint here. So they go from the minimum up to Q1, that's a whisker. And then you have a whisker going from Q3 up to 69. So this is called the box and whiskers plot or just a box plot for, for uh, short. Now, for the box plot to be there, you don't have to have these numbers down here. You don't have to have the dot plot. You do have to have this number line, though. So you need that number line as well as all the red figure here. This, this by itself is meaningless if you don't have the number line up here with it. And, of course, you should always have some kind of title or something with it. Now, here's an example where we have two box plots together. And so let's say these are test scores from, from Mrs. Jones' algebra class, the one on top in red, and Mrs. Adams' algebra one class on the bottom in blue on the first unit. And uh, the scale here goes from 0 to 100. So let's say this is their percentage on the test. So looking at this, let's see if you can interpret what you see here. <coughs> uh, which class had the best performing student? Which had, class had the worst performing student, and which class, but which class performed better overall? Okay, so I'll let you think about that. When you think you have answers, 
then come back, but press pause right now. Well, the best performing student would be the one with the furthest one out here. So that's the red one right here. That's the best performing student, and it looks like it's at 96. And But they also had, that was Mrs. Jones' class. So Mrs. Jones' class also had the worst performing student at 40. Overall, the blue class, Mrs. Adams, is much better. So notice a couple of things about this. Uh, all of Mrs. Adams' students scored at least 50, and one-fourth of Mrs. Jones' students scored below 50. And everybody in, in uh, Mrs. Adams' class scored above 50, 50 or above. Interesting. Okay, now let's look a little bit further. Um, 61, 2, 3, 4, 65 is Q1 right here. So three-fourths of Mrs. Jones' class scored at least 65, whereas less than half of Mrs. Jones' class scored above 65. The top half of Mrs. Jones' class scored 70 or above, whereas the top half of Mrs. Adams' class only scored 60 or above. So even though the best student was in Mrs. Jones' class, overall, Mrs. Adams' class was definitely the best. The middle half of Mrs. Adams' class went from 65 to 83. The middle half of Mrs. Jones' class is more spread out. It goes from 50 to 77, is that it? I think that's 77 or 78. Notice that also, we haven't talked about this much later yet, but notice that Mrs. Jones' class is much more spread out. The whole thing is more spread out, and the middle, middle piece is actually more spread out, whereas Miss Adams' class is more consistent as well. Okay, so now I have some data here. And let's, this is made up data, but let's, uh, let's say that we have a classroom of students who are doing a fundraiser for their class and they're going out and selling boxes of candy. And Ashley sold two boxes of candy and Barney sold 15 and Becky sold 12 boxes and so forth. And we have all those students' first names here and we have how many boxes of uh, candy that they sold. Okay, so I want you to do several things with this data. In fact, we're going to come back to this data uh, multiple times, just like we've been coming back to the presidential data uh, a few times uh, as we go through this here. So with this particular data set, what I want you to do is create a dot plot for the data, compute the sample size, compute the total amount of candy sales sold, total number of boxes, Compute the quartiles and then draw a box and whiskers plot below the dot plot, but using the same set of axes or the same axis. Or it could be above, but it needs to be using the same set of axes. Okay, that's going to take you a few minutes to do, and you want to get out a piece of graph paper to do that, to do this with. Think ahead a little bit about where you want the, what kind of uh, scale you want. Uh, it needs to go at least from the minimum to the maximum. Okay, uh, so anyway, take a few minutes to work these exercises out and see if you can do that, and we can come back and check against my work in a few minutes. So press pause now. All right, let's see what happens here. Well, if you did this correctly, it should look something like this. Here's our dot plot. It goes from 2 to 30. There are a bunch of them right here at 15. There's a bunch of 14s. Only one way down here by itself, one way up here. An underachiever out here and an overachiever out here. And so we can take this. And if you look, there are uh, 44 students. So that's the sample size. N is 44. And if you add up all the total boxes, it turns out to be 600. 
30 boxes of candy sold all together. And we see that the minimum is 2, so that's where the bottom of our whisker is. And the top of the upper whisker is at 30, which is the maximum. Now let's see, with 44 students, let's see, we're going to be halfway between the 22nd and 23rd will be the median. So let's count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, and 23. There's the 22nd and 23rd one right there. They're both 15s. You average 15 to 15, you get a 15. So 15, that should be that should be right above that. 15 is the median. Uh, I'm sorry, that's 14, excuse me. 14, 15's over here. 14 is the median. All right, now how about, uh, so that leaves 22, remember, and when there's a, an even number, then then uh, we will have half below and half above. The median's not counted there. So what happens is there'll be 22 in the lower half, 22 in the upper half. So uh, let me, let's do count that again. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. So these four 15, 14s are part of the lower half, but those two are part of the upper half. See how that works? So if we've got the 22 in the lower half, halfway between the 11th and the 12th one will be the Q1. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. The 11 and 12th one are both 12, so Q1 is 12. And so that's where our, our uh, bottom of our box is. 11th one from the top, but between the 11th and 12th one from the top should be Q3. So let's count there. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 11 and 12th one are both 16. So halfway between that is still 16. And so that's Q3. And so now we can see our, our box and whiskers plot, our box plot there. Okay, so hopefully now you can create uh, dot plots and box and whiskers plots, and you can interpret them. So what is this saying again? One fourth of the data, one fourth of the students sold somewhere between two and twelve boxes. One fourth of the students sold somewhere between twelve and fourteen. One fourth sold somewhere between fourteen and sixteen, and then one fourth sold somewhere between sixteen and thirty, at least. At least approximately that's true. And so about half, the middle half, most of the students, well, half of the students, sold somewhere between 12 and 16, the middle half. All right, I think you're ready to do some exercises on that for homework.